and hopefully coming out of that with a plan on how we're going to be able to collaborate with the county to uh, define and then implement a uh, citywide, countywide sustainability f plan for, uh, for our citizens too. Then <laughs> uh, the next thing I was, I was really pleased with was to uh, the purchase of Eastland Mall. You know, that, that is a, a, a piece of blight. I mean, if, you, if you're heading down towards Eastland on Central Avenue, you'll see all kinds of vibrant businesses all on Central Avenue mm -hmm. from all over the world. But all anybody ever sees is what's at the corner of Central and Sharon Amity yes. and that empty mall. So we own it now. Um, Councilman Howard uh, never fails to tease me about whether I'm over there cutting the grass or and he's going to call code enforcement on me if I'm not. <laughs> but uh, I, I was just thrilled that, that the whole council unanimously uh, approved the purchase of that and using the bond money that had been set aside in 2008. And I also need to thank the previous councils for their vision and making sure that that money was there for us when the time came to take advantage of it and, and, and make a, an advancement for, you know, really helping to revitalize the east side. The capital investment plan. Tell the audience a little bit about that and what does that mean? Well, the CIP, the capital investment <coughs> program, at the retreat in February, uh, this council uh, and staff, we, you know, through a series of meetings and discussions, we determined that in devising a capital improvement plan for, you know, this year, that we wanted to, uh, instead of just, you know, it, it's usually about sidewalks and gutters and, and paving roads and, uh, you know, programs like that. Uh, we wanted to be more transformational in our approach. Uh, the city is challenged in the way the demographics have shifted mostly to the south and to the north, and that we have this crescent that runs from the west side across the north of the center city and then over to the east side, where we are challenged with you know, low end of grade scores, uh, high concentration of those on food stamps, um, and uh, diminishing values in, in real estate value. Um, so we felt like if we could uh, have larger, bigger projects where people could look at them and drive down the street and say, wow, that's where our tax dollars are going, and that they could be catalysts to encourage more redevelopment in the area. For instance, the uh, Bojangles Arena to be converted into an amateur sports complex. Uh, that was a very bold uh, plan. Um, the, the, the Berry Hill redevelopment on the west side to help uh, leverage the, the multimodal uh, 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 freight trains, uh, yard that's going to be going in there at the end of the runways of the Charlotte Airport. Uh, we need better roads over there to accommodate all that freight traffic that's going to be coming in there and put on trucks that has to be make it over to 485 and head out in all the different directions and to west and the east and the north and the south. So uh, that that was a, a, a big plan. It, it it meant that people with a home valued at two hundred thousand dollars would see an increase in their property taxes to the city of about six dollars. A month. Now, think back to also that Charlotte has one of the lowest tax rates compared to other cities right. in, exactly. in the state, and that we've only raised taxes twice in the last 26 years. People get really confused about the city county government, another problem with two governments occupying the same piece of real estate. And so, uh, with the revaluation challenges that the county had last year. Um, it really helped stigmatize the prospects of a capital improvement plan being successful in its form. And I think if you go back and look at the discussions that we had in our budget retreats in March and April and May, uh, I, as a new member of council and a novice at this, I felt like we were on a positive path to approve that and that it would be on the bond uh, the bond initiatives will be on the ballot later this year. 
in November, but um, that wasn't the way it turned out. So we're looking back at it again to uh, see what we can do, uh, taking a little more time to understand what kind of uh, options there would be in funding things like the streetcar, which I'm a big proponent of. I think it's important that we improve our transit system and that, uh, uh, you know, when I was advocating for light rail in the Southeast Corridor 10 years ago as a community activist, uh, some of the studies that I had read said that streetcars actually have m greater economic impact than light rail does. And if you think about it, that, you know, light rail is running down a dedicated right of way and you get off the station in the light rail, you still got to get to your destination. With a streetcar running down the street, there's your destination right there when you get off of it. Yes. So it, it has a, a much greater impact on the economics of a community than a light rail. Uh, the other aspect is, is that the uh, uh, Central Avenue route and the uh, 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 <laughs> Losing the name of the street now by Johnson C. Smith there. On Trade Street. Uh, uh, you know, trade and up uh, Beatty Ford. Beatty's Ford Road. That, uh, you know, those are the second and third highest volume ridership mm -hmm. routes on the CAT system. Uh, the streetcar would have carried more passengers than a bus. It would cost less to maintain and operate on an annual basis. And it has a uh, a cachet associated with it that it would encourage more people to, to ride it. Look, uh, rail transportation isn't necessarily for my generation. Uh, we were thinking about the future generations because the city of Charlotte, you know, has pretty much grown out to and, and grown as much, you know, uh, horizontally as it can. <clears throat> the growth we have to look for in the future is going to be vertical. <clears throat> it's going to be denser. It's going to be more intense. And the people who are going to come and live in that kind of development are also going to be uh, more uh, apt to use public transportation. So we need to go ahead and start laying out the groundwork to, to have those systems in place so that uh, the younger folks that we want to attract uh, will have that amenity and that asset uh, that they will see as an advantage because Charlotte is not a a traditional tourist town. We don't have mountain ranges. We don't have a beach. We don't have snow slopes, <laughs> you know, uh, for skiing. <clears throat> so what, what can we bring here? Well, we can, we can bring the assets of our people, which when I was growing up in geography class in the sixth grade, and the, the geography teacher says, what's the uh, number one asset of the country? And it's, it's, it's our people. So we need to be sure that we're thinking ahead, that we're planning for the future, and that we're preparing for the generations that come after us. Because, you know, I, I ride in on Independence Boulevard. I ride on Independence Boulevard because somebody back in the 40s says, you know, we need this big highway that cuts through the, these communities that we've established out here on the periphery of the city so that we can get commerce in and out of here right away. We take advantage of that all the time. It's not because we thought of it, it's because those who came before us, the shoulders that we stand on, thought of it. So now it's our responsibility to make sure that we continue to ensure that Charlotte is a vibrant, a, a, the kind of place that people want to come to and live and settle down in and raise their families and, and grow old in. And, and that's our responsibility. Being a married man, how much of an impact has your wife been in you in office? I could not do any of this without her. She has been, she manages my calendar. And, and believe me, that saves me a couple of hours every day. Yes. So, you know, and now it's, it's interesting now after about 10 months, nine months to, uh, you know, people are getting used to dealing with her to get me in the schedule and they don't even contact me anymore. They go straight to her and says, is John available in the next couple of weeks for a day, you know, whatever. And it, it's been great. Uh, she really is a, a partner in this endeavor. And she's a native Charlottean. Um, so she has a, a love for her community 
and her participating with me and helping me in this endeavor is a way for her to give back to her community, she feels. Yeah, make a great partner. <laughs> Thanks. Great partner. Thanks. The DNC, Democratic Convention, we just recently had. What type of impact was it to our city? You know, uh, Charlotte's always on the lookout for the next big thing, it seems. And that starts back with, you know, last year I shot a documentary called City of Canvas, which was about Camp Green, the World War I training facility that was set out there on, on the west side in 1917 and 1919. And it was the Chamber of Commerce and city leaders that went in to Washington and lobbied for putting one of those here, and it happened and it really had a major impact on the city. So I think we're gonna see another uh, cycle of major impact uh, that the DNC has brought to Charlotte. Uh, the DNC was a, a, a great opportunity for the city to shine and to be able to show that it can do events of this magnitude and, and with this level of, of proficiency and efficiency involved with it. Um, I also think that uh, it's, it's going to make some other folks around the world sit up and take notice and say, well, let's consider what we were planning here. Maybe it might work there, and let's go talk to these folks at least. Um, it, it, it never hurts us to try to work outside of our comfort zone. Yes. I mean, that's where the really interesting stuff happens whenever you get outside of your comfort zone and, and, can, and can see that you can uh, uh, be effective in, in these endeavors that you've never had experience with before. So I'm, I'm anxious to see what comes from it. It was an exciting time. I was a delegate at the convention, yes. so it was uh, uh, very special for me to be able to sit on the floor uh, every night and, and participate at that level and to network with my fellow North Carolinians from around the state and spend time with them at breakfast, at lunch, and then at the, in the evenings on the convention floor. Uh, it was a great time, great time indeed. We're running short on time, Councilman Autry. If you had one more thing to say to the citizens of Charlotte, Mecklenburg, what would you say? Get engaged. Don't sit back. Your city needs you. Whatever it is you do, whatever it is you, you think you can bring to the, to, the, to the playing field for making our city a great and vibrant place, we need you. We're ready for you. We'll find something for you to do. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Mr. John Autry, City Council District 5. He's doing a great job. Thank you for watching the show. You'll be encouraged. Thank you. Paul.